It's no surprise that newsmakers try to manipulate the audience. They want you to believe that they are the one holding the line and they'll use any trick they can to get you there. But don't let them fool you. Get unspun. I'm Amanda Sturgill. I've been a reporter, and today I teach future reporters to cut the spin and think critically about what newsmakers say. My podcast, Unspun, shows you how to know when you're being manipulated by the news. Learn to spot the tricks and how to make up your own mind about what's true. So if you're tired of being fooled by the news, subscribe to Unspun today. Unspun, because you deserve the truth. Hi, I'm Moji Alawodeal from the Feminist Buzzkills Live Pod, the only podcast that helps you navigate the news in this post pro anti-abortion hellscape. Each week with co-hosts Marie Khan and Liz Winstead, we dissect all the news from that sketchy intersection of abortion and misogyny with providers and activists working on the ground. The cherry on top is we have amazing comedy guests who help us laugh through the rage. Feminist Buzzkills Live drops Fridays wherever you pod. Listen and subscribe, because when BS is popping, we pop off. M-S-W Media. News. Daily Beans, Daily Beans. Daily Beans, Daily Beans. Hello! Welcome to the Daily Beans for Tuesday, October 10th, 2023. Today, the leaders of France, Germany, Italy, the UK and the US have released a joint statement on Israel. Senator Tommy Tuberville is still refusing to release his hold on military promotions. Senate Democrats push the confirmation of the US-Israel envoy. Elon Musk promotes unvetted disinformation on Twitter in the wake of the Hamas attacks. And RFK Jr. has officially announced a run for president as an independent. I'm your host, Allison Gill. Hey, everyone. It is Tuesday. Dana is out today. She had some last minute travel plans. Everything's okay. She'll be back tomorrow. Uh, She's just traveling right now and couldn't record with me today. So I'll be going solo today. Also, I just recorded the latest episode of Clean Up on Aisle 45 with Pete Strzok. That podcast will be out tomorrow. And uh, don't forget, there is a new episode of Jack out uh, this week with uh, Andy McCabe and I. So don't forget to listen to that. We have uh, a lot of news to get to today. Let's hit the hot notes. Hot notes. All right, first up, today, the leaders of France, Germany, Italy, the United Kingdom, and the United States of America released the following joint statement following their call today. They say, today, we, President Macron of France, Chancellor Schultz of Germany, Prime Minister Malone of Italy, Prime Minister Sunak of the United Kingdom, and President Biden of the United States, express our steadfast and united support to the state of Israel and our unequivocal condemnation of Hamas and its appalling acts of terrorism. We make it clear that the terrorist acts of Hamas have no justification, no legitimacy, and must be universally condemned. There is never any justification for terrorism. In recent days, the world has watched in horror as Hamas terrorists massacred families in their homes, slaughtered over 200 young people enjoying a music festival, and kidnapped elderly women, children, and entire families who are now being held as hostages. Our countries will support Israel in its efforts to defend itself and its people against such atrocities. We further emphasize that this is not a moment for any party hostile to Israel to exploit these attacks to seek advantage. All of us recognize the legitimate aspirations of the Palestinian people and support equal measures of justice and freedom for Israelis and Palestinians alike, But make no mistake, Hamas does not represent those aspirations, and it offers nothing for the Palestinian people other than more terror and bloodshed. Over the coming days, we will remain united and coordinated together as allies and as common friends of Israel to ensure Israel is able to defend itself and to ultimately set the conditions for a peaceful and integrated Middle East region. Now, Joe Biden is set to give remarks on the state of the war and the U.S. response from the White House today at 1 p.m. Eastern. I know MSNBC will be broadcasting that. And from Burgess Everett at Politico, Senate Democrats are pushing aggressively for quick confirmation of Jack Lew as ambassador to Israel after the attack by Hamas on Saturday. Lew was nominated in early September. 
But the attack, widely condemned by both parties and across the ideological spectrum, will kick the effort into high gear. It will jumpstart a broader debate over aid to Israel in an already chaotic fall. Senate Foreign Relations Chair Ben Cardin, a Democrat from Maryland, says he hopes fellow senators, quote, will join me in promptly confirming Lou. And Senator Brian Schatz, a Democratic member of the Foreign Relations Committee, said we should do this instantaneously. And we also need to confirm a chief of naval operations. For the U.S. to be without an ambassador at this critical moment would be political malpractice by the Senate. Jack Lou is highly qualified and should be confirmed this coming week. That's Senator Chris Coons, Democrat from Delaware, another member of the panel. In addition to Lou's confirmation, Cardin said he would prioritize sending more resources to Israel, including for the Iron Dome missile defense system, as well as potential supplemental spending bills. Those could either ride on a must-pass spending bill in November or perhaps in a separate package. Lawmakers are also trying to supply aid to Ukraine after leaving that out of the last continuing resolution. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell said that failure to support our friends under attack in Kiev or Tel Aviv will only embolden the world's largest state sponsor of terrorism and fellow authoritarians. The Senate is on recess until October 16th, and the House lacks a speaker, complicating plans to pass new legislation quickly. But Senate Democrats can move nominees like Lou unilaterally after he received bipartisan support when he was confirmed as Treasury Secretary 10 years ago. Senate Republicans will have some sway over how quickly the Liu nomination will move through the chamber, and Senate Foreign Relations ranking member Jim Risch, Republican from Idaho, signaled he would be open to cooperating. Quote, the file for the Liu nomination was just completed last week, which is a critical step as the committee moves toward a hearing. That's what a spokesperson said for Risch. The attacks on Israel are a clear provocation, and the U.S. team on the ground is so far doing well. The committee will perform its due diligence as quickly as possible to move this nomination forward. Senator Ted Cruz has previously put holds on some of the Biden administration nominees for posts related to the Middle East, raising questions about how quickly Lou could move through the Senate. A spokesperson Saturday said Cruz had not yet met with Lou, but indicated deep concerns about administration nominees related to Israel. He could block this whole thing. Quote, Senator Cruz has said since the summer that it was becoming impossible to expeditiously advance Biden administration nominees because those nominees keep lying to Congress and the American people, testifying publicly that they're committed to countering Iran and deepening the U.S.-Israel relationship, then implementing the opposite policies in secret once confirmed. That's according to a Ted Cruz spokesman. He will evaluate Lou's nomination against the backdrop of those concerns. This fucking guy could stop it. Biden administration officials are eager to see Lou confirmed in light of Saturday's attack in Israel. In a conference call Saturday, one senior official noted that he has yet to be confirmed. Quote, obviously, it would be great to have him on the ground in Israel. Senator Schatz said of Tuberville, this is serious business. If he wants to challenge health care policy at DOD, he can introduce a bill, but he cannot undermine our ability to help our allies and partners. And speaking of Tuberville from NBC, Tuberville says he isn't backing down on this months-long blockade of hundreds of military promotion, even amid Hamas's deadly attack. Now, the Pentagon, quote, clearly thinks forcing taxpayers to facilitate abortion is more important than confirming their top nominees without a vote. They could end this situation today by dropping their illegal and immoral policy and get everyone confirmed rapidly, but they refuse. That's Tuberville spokesperson Stephen Stafford in a statement to NBC News. They went on to say, if the Biden administration wants their nominees confirmed, then Senate Democrats can do what Coach just did in September and file a cloture petition to force a vote. The news was first reported by Politico. Hundreds have died in the ongoing battle Hamas launched against Israel over the weekend, with Hamas fighters having also taken a number of civilians and soldiers hostage. The State Department is working to verify reports that Americans were killed or taken hostage. Antony Blinken said that to uh, meet the press this Sunday. The Biden administration has stated its support for Israel. As we know, the conflict stretched into day two. As that happened, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin announced Sunday that U.S. military is moving an aircraft carrier strike group and a military aircraft group closer to Israel to show support and that it will also supply Israel with munitions and other military supplies as soon as possible. Now, Tuberville's blockade has put a hold on at least 300 military nominees, including the top officers who would command the forces in the Middle East, the top officers who would command these forces. He said his effort is in protest of, as we know, DOD policy that gives time off and reimbursement for travel for service members and their family members seeking abortions out of state. 
Democrats in the White House have condemned Tumberville's use of, of this procedural tactic to clog up the confirmation of military officials as a threat to military preparedness. He can't actually block the Senate from processing any promotion, but his hold has dramatically slowed a process that typically proceeds without votes. Tuberville and some Republicans have argued that Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer could call each of the hundreds of nominations for individual votes a process that would take hundreds of hours for each one. The Senate last month used this tactic to confirm its first military nominees in months. Air Force General C.Q. Brown as chairman of the Joint Chiefs, nation's top military officer, General Randy George as the Army Chief of Staff, and General Eric Smith as Commandant of the Marine Corps. Brown's confirmation vote came four months after President Joe Biden nominated him. Brown is set to succeed Mark Milley, whose term ends this month. To expedite the process and confirm the nominees and block would require unanimous consent from all 100 senators, something that won't exist unless and until Tuberville lifts his hold over the Defense Department's abortion policy. Another option the Senate could use to get around Tuberville's blockade, in theory, is to vote to change the rules and make a one-time exception. That would require two-thirds of the Senate or 67 votes, and it's unclear whether that would happen. Schumer's office didn't immediately respond to requests for comment. I'll say it again. Change the fucking rules. And from Joseph Men at The Post, as false information about the rapidly changing war between Gaza Strip militants, Hamas terrorists, and Israel proliferated on social media platform X over the weekend, owner Elon Musk personally recommended users follow accounts notorious for promoting lies. Quote, for following the war in real time, at War Monitors and at Scent Defender are good. That's what Musk posted on Twitter on Sunday morning to 150 million followers. That post was viewed 11 million times in three hours, drawing thanks from those two accounts before Musk deleted it. It was a friend of the pod, Andrew Laufer, who pointed out a couple of terrible anti-Semitic things that War Monitor said. And then that post was deleted. Both were among the most important early spreaders of a false claim in May that there had been an explosion near the White House. The Dow Jones Industrial Average stock briefly dropped 85 points before that story was debunked. Emerson T. Brooking, a researcher at the Atlantic Council Digital Forensics Research Lab, posted that scent defender is, quote, absolutely poisonous, regularly posting wrong and unverifiable things, inserting random editorialization and trying to juice its paid subscriber count. The War Monitor account has argued with others over Israel and religion, posting a year ago that, quote, the overwhelming majority of people in the media and banks are Zionists and telling a correspondent in June to, quote, go worship a Jew, little bro. Now, information researchers said the new conflict was an early test of how the revamped Twitter conveys accurate data during a major crisis and that the immediate impression was poor. Quote, anecdotal evidence that X is failing this stress test is plentiful. That's Mike Calfield. He's a research scientist at the University of Washington Center for an Informed Public. Quote, go on the platform, do a search on Israel or Gaza. You don't have to scroll very far to find dubious or debunked information. Musk left up his replies to the two accounts he had promoted, each of which have more than 600,000 followers, boosting their visibility. He also continued to fault, quote, mainstream media, telling users to trust X instead. Other accounts on X drew engagement with photos or videos of unrelated attacks from years earlier, or false claims that Iran or others had entered the conflict. And of course, the false claim that $6 billion of U.S. taxpayer money was sent to Iran. An account imitating the Jerusalem Post falsely reported that the Israeli prime minister had been taken to the hospital. That collected more than 100,000 views. And numerous accounts promoted a faked document saying that the White House had approved $8 billion in aid to Israel. Others posted video of buildings collapsing in Syria long ago and said they were in Gaza. Researchers have said that X has gotten much less reliable since Musk took control nearly a year ago. He ended the practice of awarding verified checks to established media accounts, stopped labeling some accounts as government affiliated, and began sending money to accounts that draw heavy engagement rewarding views instead of accuracy. A recent study published by the European Commission concluded that Russian propaganda about its war in Ukraine has reached more people on X this year than it did last year. Quote, people who have paid for blue checks have a financial incentive to LARP, that's live action role play, as war reporters by dredging up old stories and fake footage. 
Elon Musk enables this. Last week, Musk said he would change the way articles are shared by removing the headlines and promoting only pictures, which experts said would decrease traffic to news sites. That's the point. Musk also has been contributing to a broader legal and political campaign that has succeeded in quieting some academics and research groups who track misinformation by accusing them of fostering unconstitutional censorship. He has threatened to sue the Anti-Defamation League over its reports showing a rise in anti-Semitic posts on X since Musk bought it. Biden administration officials did not respond immediately to questions about whether it was working with social media companies to identify disinformation. The U.S. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, which is among the government agencies being targeted by Musk and Republicans, referred questions to the State Department, which monitors foreign disinformation. Officials there did not respond to a query. The White House also did not respond to emails for this story. And from Politico, presidential candidate RFK Jr. said on Monday he's abandoning his bid for the Democratic nomination for the White House in 2024. Somebody posted on Twitter, he's breaking up with Democrats. I posted back, we were never dating. Quote, I'm here to declare myself an independent candidate for president of the United States. That's what Kennedy announced to a crowd of supporters at Independence Mall in Philly. Quote, we declare independence from the cynical elites who betray our hope and who amplify our divisions. And finally, we declare independence from the two political parties. As we all know, his family name is almost synonymous with the Democratic Party, but Kennedy has determined that its primary nomination process was skewed in favor of Biden. That history, he said, made the decision personally painful for him. Some members of the Kennedy family released a joint statement in response, calling his announcement deeply saddening and perilous for the country. Quote, Bobby might share the same name as our father, but he does not share the same values, vision, or judgment. That's the statement from Rory Kennedy, Kerry Kennedy, Joseph Kennedy II, and Kathleen Kennedy Townsend. However, his children are supportive of his bid, and his daughter-in-law, Amaryllis Fox, is a co-manager of his campaign. The environmental justice lawyer turned politician has long expressed frustration with the primary process in interviews. His campaign manager, former Democratic Rep. Dennis Kucinich, advocated for a more competitive primary in a letter to the DNC last month. And the super PAC supporting Kennedy even protested outside a recent DNC meeting in D.C. to show its discontent. Those efforts didn't change anything, and now Kennedy is pursuing an independent bid. In primary polling, Kennedy has about 14 percent support on average. Critics of the long-shot candidate say his polling dropped noticeably among Democratic primary voters as they got to know Kennedy more, including his skepticism on vaccines. One survey of voters found that nearly half of respondents were confusing Kennedy with his father, Robert Kennedy Sr., the popular late senator from New York. But Kennedy's appeal might be stronger outside of the Democratic primary voters, In the weeks leading up to Kennedy's announcement, as he grew more public about his frustrations, some pollsters tested Kennedy in a general election matchup against Biden and former President Donald Trump. The super PAC supporting Kennedy, American Values 2024, released the polling, showing that Kennedy had the potential to pull more support from Trump than Biden in a three-way race. An independent poll from Ipsos also gave Kennedy about 14 percent support from a survey of about a thousand American adults drawing from both Biden and Trump's head-to-head support percentages. Kennedy threw barbs at both during his speech, announcing his candidacy as an independent. RNC chairwoman Rhonda McDaniel blasted Kennedy's announcement on Monday, questioning whether he could actually run as an independent, given his support for many liberal causes. Quote, the Democrats are frightened that I'm going to spoil the election for President Biden, Kennedy said, and the Republicans are frightened that I'm going to spoil it for President Trump. The truth is they're both right. My intention is is to spoil it for both of them. All right, everybody, we could really use your good news this week. Please send it to us at dailybeanspod.com. Just click on contact. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with it. Stick around. After these messages, we'll be right back. It's no surprise that newsmakers try to manipulate the audience. They want you to believe that they are the one holding the line and they'll use any trick they can to get you there. But don't let them fool you. Get unspun. I'm Amanda Sturgill. I've been a reporter, and today I teach future reporters to cut the spin and think critically about what newsmakers say. My podcast, Unspun, shows you how to know when you're being manipulated by the news. Learn to spot the tricks and how to make up your own mind about what's true. So if you're tired of being fooled by the news, subscribe to Unspun today. Unspun, because you deserve the truth.
The issues of the day are really complicated. Everybody loves a good hot take, but really understanding an issue takes some digging. I'm Asha Rangava. I teach national security law at Yale University. I'm a former FBI special agent, and I'm a legal and national security analyst. And I'm Renato Mariotti. I'm a former federal prosecutor, a practicing lawyer, and a legal analyst. And we're here to help you understand topics that can't be boiled down to a soundbite or a tweet. Join us each week as we dig deep into pressing legal topics. Listen to It's Complicated anywhere you get your podcasts and check out our YouTube channel. Hi, I'm Liz Winstead. I'm Moji Alawode L. And we're the hosts of Feminist Buzzkills, the only weekly podcast dedicated to keeping you informed while making you laugh as we all navigate this post Roe v. Wade hellscape. The Supreme Court has declared that all of our uteri are just Airbnbs for the seat of the patriarchy. So every week we break down all the garbage news from that sketchy intersection of abortion and misogyny with the abortion providers and activists we need to be hearing from right now. Plus, we talk to your favorite comedians. Because face it, if your revolution doesn't have laughter, you're doing it wrong. Feminist Buzzkills drops Fridays wherever you get your podcasts. Listen, subscribe, join us on Patreon. Because when BS is popping, we pop off. Everybody, welcome back. It's time for the good news. Who likes good news, everyone? Then good news, everyone. Good news, good news. And if you have any good news, confessions, corrections, you want to play What the Mutt or Find the Cat or What the Heck Wine or uh, uh, Opine on the Bovine, I guess, if I <laughs> guess you're cow breed. I only know one now. Um, so you can you can send that in as well. Uh, or, you know, really anything, anything you want to send to a shout out to a loved one, shout out to a small business in your area or your small business or pod pet tax, or, a sh- you know, if you don't have a pet, you can send us an adoptable pet in your area. I'd like to know your thesis and dissertation topics, because that's just fun. That can just be fun. Uh, Wooby stories, anything, anything you want to send us, dailybeanspod.com. Click on contact, and you can send it in. All righty, let's see what we have up first. Carrie, pronouns she and her. Greetings from Wisconsin. If folks are interested in learning more about the fossil footprints at White Sands, the long-running and outstanding program NOVA, I love NOVA, has a documentary on the subject called Ice Age Footprints. You can currently watch it free of charge through the PBS website or app. Look for Season 49, Episode 9. Pet Tax discovered this precious baby napping on our back porch just three weeks ago. He came straight to me, heaven sent. We've named him Goose after the cat in Captain Marvel. He looks very proud of himself, doesn't he? I haven't felt this happy in a long time. Look at the orange boy. Oh, he's so cute. Captain Marvel, there he is. You're right. He looks just like him. How precious. Congratulations to the new member of your family. Next up, science nerd. Thanks for the podcast. Here's a correction of the fake COVID bleach cur. It's not sodium chloride table salt, but sodium hypochlorite bleach. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Science nerd corrections. Next up, Elise. Please pronounce Iran as its people do. Iran or uh, and Irania. Iranian. Okay, Iran, Iranian. Got it. As with Israel, we must separate the people from the government and correct pronunciation is one way we can show respect. Many thanks. So true, like Kiev. Thank you, Iran. I appreciate that. Next up, Steve. Pronounce he and him. He beans, queens. AG asked for dissertation titles. Mine was... The role of hypoxia inducible factors one and two in cobalt induced lung inflammation and development of lung immunity. Yikes, right? (laughs) My PhD was in biochemistry and toxicology. I'm an allergist immunologist now in Kalamazoo. Can't wait to hear those other dissertation titles. I believe if I'm getting it right off the top of my head, Steve, I think mine was called The Effectiveness of the National Incentive to Reduce Missed Opportunities in the Physical Therapy Clinics of the La Jolla Veterans Affairs Clinics. (laughs) 
And of course, my results, as you remember, are inconclusive because one of my three data sets was corrupt because of human error. All right. Next up from Tiffany, she and her asking you shall receive the title of my dissertation was, quote, we didn't know we were making history. The United Automobile Workers Women's Auxiliaries in Great Depression and World War II Detroit. We historians can't resist the quote from dissertation, boring ass descriptive title format. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right? And it just gets more narrow and more narrow and more narrow. Pod Pet Tax is a picture of my best boy, Seamus. He might look familiar from a pic of him with my then infant daughter I sent a couple of weeks ago. That was Sistine Chapel-esque. I remember Tiffany. Thanks for all you do. You make my Mondays and now every other day a little easier to start since I know I can turn on a pod while taking my daughter to pre-K. Last week we got in the car and she asked if we could talk to AG and DG. Hi, Uh, I think she thinks you call us and only us to give us a personal news update. She may be your tiniest fan. How could I ask for better role models than you two? Oh, my gosh. Tiffany. Hi, Tiffany. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody in the car. Yes, we just called you guys up to give you the news. So thank you. And yes, there's the beautiful kitto. Oh, I like the wood floor color, too. That's a nice darker color than than I usually see. Next up from Kristen. No pronouns. My thesis title How Non-Gender Specific Business Publications Communicate to Women. Master's Degree in Corporate Communications. Thanks for all you do. Excellent, excellent title. Next up from Britt, pronouns she and her. Hello, dear beans. I did my MA thesis on the representation of gender through cross-dressing in Edmund Spencer's The Fairy Queen. Absolutely fucking lutely useless, but I had the best thesis supervisor and graduate student travel companions that I wouldn't choose otherwise if I could. Also, it let me live in St. John's, Newfoundland, uh, the best three years of my life. Also, in the print version, the pagination is all wrong, but again, best decision ever. Thank you. Thank you, Britt. Next up, Flipper Girl. Pronoun she and her. Hello, Beans Queens. Imagine AG's hello here. I started listening to you two a couple months ago because I heard that you delivered the news and cussed. I knew then you were my kind of gals. (laughs) Fuck yeah. My news is that my 32-year-old son, who has struggled with mental health issues, especially over the last three years, is doing fantastic, is finding his mission in life to travel and help people, and has met the one with whom he wants to spend the rest of his life. I'm a proud mama, saying he climbed out of a very deep hole to become whole again. This was not an easy ride, but he did it by deciding to not just survive, but to thrive. My sweet boy's name is Sky, and clearly the sky's the limit. Thanks for all you do. Making me laugh included is a a pick of my pity pointer mix named Galenda. She was an adoption from the pound where she was. She was there for seven long months. We call her Dirt for dog nerd because she's kind of awkward, but we love her. Oh, oh, she's beautiful. Look at the eyes. Hello, baby. What a good girl. Thank you for sending that. And finally, from Nicole, I was listening to this submission about a grandma looking for a more updated moniker. Just wanted to share a funny story about my own. My granny was quite young when I was born, and there was a moment, I'll never forget, when I was about eight, calling out granny in a grocery store, and she sidled over to me and said, call me sis. She passed away last year. She was the best of the best, as both a granny and just a beautiful human. I miss her every day. For anyone who hears this, call your sis if you can. Nicole, thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks to everybody for your submissions. I love these theses and uh, dissertations. They're just ridiculous. (laughs) They're just ridiculous in their in their narrow scope, aren't they? And then nine times out of ten, you just you're like, and I don't really have any conclusions. But here's all the data. Congrats, you're you're welcome. (laughs) It's 250 pages of stuff that you can add to the body of knowledge of what I'm what I'm studying. Thank you, everybody. I needed that good news today. Dana will be back with me tomorrow. Uh, I appreciate you listening to The Daily Beans. I really do. It means a lot to me. So thank you very much. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Until then, please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Take care of the planet. Take care of your mental health. Vote blue over Q and bring someone with you. I've been AG and them's The Beans. The Daily Beans is written and executive produced by Allison Gill with additional research and reporting by Dana Goldberg. Sound design and editing is by Desiree McFarlane with art and web design by Joel Reeder with Moxie Design Studios. Music for The Daily Beans is written and performed by They Might Be Giants, and the show is a proud member of the MSW Media Network, a collection of creator-owned podcasts dedicated to news, politics, and justice. For more information, please visit mswmedia.com.
M S W Media. Fall is just around the corner, and home is the center of it all. At Ashley, seasonal decorating's a breeze with their range of designs and materials. Snuggle up on a family-friendly sectional or an ultra-modern sofa, or gather outside and enjoy the crisp, cool air with a new fire pit or conversation set. From minor refreshes to total overhauls, Ashley has the essentials to make your home fall functional and fabulous. Shop in store or visit Ashley.com today. Hi, I'm Harry Litman, host of Talking Feds, a roundtable that brings together prominent figures from government law and journalism for a dynamic discussion of the most important topics of the day. Each Monday, I'm joined by a slate of Feds favorites and new voices to break down the headlines and give the insider's view of what's going on in Washington and beyond, plus sidebars explaining important legal concepts read by your favorite celebrities. Find Talking Feds wherever you get your podcasts.